Hi, welcome back to our unit on flux models. Uh, today we are going to uh, introduce a model called the Gaussian plume model, which is a real world, world model that can be used to describe the, the dispersion of a point source of pollution. Uh, and it's particularly uh, often invoked when we're thinking about a pollutant that's coming from a smokestack. The Gaussian plume model we'll see builds on what we learned a while back about uh, diffusion models. So we're coming back to thinking about diffusion. And as a reminder, in the diffusion model, we had some mass that was released at a specific time, time zero at a specific location, x zero. And then we described how that concentration changed as a function of location x and time t as it kind of diffused out. And that the shape of this relationship looked like a Gaussian, a normal distribution that was you know, spreading further and further. You know, the variance was increasing with time. That's something we did in lecture and in and, and lab as well. That diffusion model can be generalized to a two-dimensional model as well. Uh, we have the same mass, but we have a diffusion term in the x direction, and then we can just have another diffusion term in the y direction, kind of imagining you know, that at every point in the x direction, there's, an, there's another Gaussian plume with, you know, for the amount of mass that's going in the x direction, they're describing how that is spread out on the y direction. Uh, so things are spreading out much, much further, much faster. Uh, it's, just, it's just using in two directions. So things are kind of the total mass is going down more quickly uh, any particular place. And we can combine terms to uh, show that this model for concentration and now is a function of x, y, and t. Um, also takes on the form of a, a Gaussian distribution, but it's now a, a bivariate or two-dimensional multivariate uh, normal distribution. So the Gaussian plume model is going to kind of leverage this same idea of two-dimensional diffusion, but we're going to apply it to thinking about uh, a point source of pollution. And one of the things that we notice if we look at that point source of pollution is we don't just have pollution diffusing away in all directions equally from the smokestack. We also have, uh, well, one, we have the z component, a height. We also have a clear advective component. So things are moving downwind. So this figure kind of di diagrammatically kind of illustrates some key points about the Gaussian plume model. Uh, first, some points of reference in this model. The x-axis in the Gaussian plume model is always defined as the downwind direction. So it's not north, south, east, west in this sort of coordinate system. X is always downwind. You know, if the, if the wind is blowing from south to, to north, then north is x. You know, if it's blowing to the southwest, then southwest is x. Um, you know, whatever direction the wind is blowing, that's you. You align uh, the x-axis with the the wind direction. So next, uh, if we take that x at any point downwind, we want to be able to describe how the pollutant is dispersing. Uh, perpendicular to that in the y direction. So y is perpendicular to the downwind. So it's the lateral uh, spread as you move downwind. And then z is the vertical spread as you move downwind. And what we're going to find uh, is that this is going to take on a, a shape that is pretty much a bivariate Gaussian at any point x downwind. Also note that the Gaussian plume model is not a fully dynamic model. It doesn't actually have time in it. It's going to end up describing concentration as a function of x, y, and z. But what it does is it's uh, it's solved for this in equilibrium. So if wind speed is constant and emissions are constant, each bit of mass that's coming out of this point source is moving downwind at some rate determined by the wind speed. And so it kind of combines. Uh, downwind location is kind of a proxy for time. For any particular p 
piece of pollution, but there's a continual emissions. And so you reach some steady state. Uh, the other thing that's notable about uh, the Gaussian plume is it has this idea of an emissions height. Um, and so it combines both the height of the smokestack itself or whatever it, your source of emission is. So what is the actual height of the emissions? That's the physical height H and then this effective stack height, capital H. So lowercase h is the actual height, capital H is the effective height. And that's kind of the, the height that the plume reaches um, after it kind of comes out of the smokestack and reaches kind of a steady state with the environment. And that's due to both the vertical momentum of the material coming out of a smokestack, as well as the heat. So it's kind of buoyed up by the fact that it's usually warmer than the surrounding air. Um, so as, you know, as that heat dissipates and the momentum peters out as, uh, you know, as kind of the turbulent energy uh, dissipates, it reaches um, kind of a steady state. Um, and that's that effective stack height. And we'll see later that that effective stack height varies as a function of a whole, whole bunch of things. Cool, so that introduces conceptually this idea of the Gaussian plume model, a model for predicting uh, pollution constant, you know, concentrations of a pollutant coming out of a point source with some height as a function of downwind direction, lateral direction and, and vertical dimension. Uh, and in the next set of videos, we're going to dive into the actual math for how this model works. Thanks.